right, so if you guys remember a few episodes ago, it's probably more like, might have been three, four months ago, we talked a little bit about and had a segment on um, Stripe integrating with cryptocurrency. Do you remember that, Aaron? I sure talked do. a little bit about how they were going to be, I believe it was Solana. Do you remember which coins it was? It was like Solana, Polygon. Bitcoin, right? And there was one or two others, maybe USDC. I think it was ETH too, wasn't it? I don't remember. But there were a number of, of popular cryptocurrencies that they were going to be integrating and allowing uh, payment services with. And I was kind of talking about the merging of Web 2.0 with Web 3.0, right? Mm -hmm. So a few days ago, we had uh, Stripe acquired the stable coin, stable coin platform Bridge in a $1.1 billion deal. So I wanted to definitely revisit that and kind of update people on, on that who saw our initial clip when we were talking about this. So it says this is Stripe's large, largest acquisition ever and the most wow. valuable deal in the cryptocurrency industry so far. That's not to be understated. There hasn't really been any very large acquisitions. So super cool to see. Uh, it talks a little bit about the ROI for the bridge employees and such, but that doesn't really matter. This is the part I kind of wanted to talk about. So it says the, the company brought back cryptocurrency payment functionality for businesses in the U.S. earlier this month, supporting USDC transactions on multiple blockchain networks, including Ethereum, oh. Solana, and Polygon. We were correct. Yeah, so that was the those were the coins we were looking for. And then it also mentions the acquisition follows Stripe's partnership with Coinbase in June, a few months ago, where Stripe integrated the base layer two network into its crypto payment offering and established itself as a payment method within Coinbase wallet. So they're out here absolutely making moves and, um, smart of them, dude. Yeah. And as far as like merchant processors, you know, like you have Square, Stripe, PayPal, uh, these types. Stripe is by far the most innovative. And so yep. what this is going to do is kind of unlock that aspect of uh, game theory, which we've talked about before, where everyone else kind of uh, has to now scramble to make moves, right? Because mm -hmm. for every month that Stripe has this uh, capability and their competitors don't, they're just going to siphon their customers away from them. Right. So right. it's kind of a, that's one of the cool things about capitalism where the consumers end up benefiting because the companies have to uh, compete with one another. And that ends up driving costs down that ends up driving innovation and things of this nature. So mm -hmm. very exciting day and time in general for any cryptocurrency investors. And for those of you who have been, in crypto or who maybe have just recently entered after educating yourself a little bit further from our show or wherever you're at with it. It's definitely exciting because, you know, there's been this notion and I think I've brought this up before on the show, Aaron, but there's been this notion um, up until now, really, that, you know, you, you buy crypto, you're, you're holding it, and then you're basically waiting for this day in which you're going to sell it to convert it back to cash. But it's like, the dollar is not something you necessarily want to be holding long term. So there's kind of like this required paradigm shift where it's like we're quickly entering a world where you don't necessarily need to cash out and go back to cash. And I think that's like I said, it's an it's a paradigm shift. It's not it's not second nature to just understand that. Right. Especially even for seasoned mm -hmm. crypto investors like I see it every day most are treating it as if it's a stock or anything else where it's like, I'm going to take profit and then I'm going to cash yeah. out and then it's going to move it to my bank. And it's like, the rules are different in a fourth turning. Like this is, you know, I haven't been screaming from the rooftops like once in a generation opportunity for nothing. <laughs> so it's just a little bit different. And, but even for someone like myself, who's, you know, prepared for this for years, it's still like kind of surreal to see stuff like this where I it's like the wait, same way like, really i don't 
I really don't have to it's cash happening. out. Like it's finally here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. We've been waiting. So, yeah. So it's cool. So what that means is basically like, it's not that you never take profits, right? Cause you don't necessarily, you don't need to hold certain coins and you may not want to hold certain coins through bull and bear cycles. But what it does mean is like, instead of taking profits from, let's say like Solana and converting it into USDC, which is a stable coin that's pegged one-to-one to the dollar, it's just a digital version of that. But then there's that extra step of, okay, from that selling it and cashing it out to my bank to where it actually is dollars, right? So that's called yeah. off-ramping. That extra step is no longer going to be required. Right. And it's going to be very popular in the next like 12 months. We're going to see a lot of this. I talked about X portal. Do you remember that a while ago? There was yeah, like that app that was offering that. But the issue is uh, they haven't rolled it out yet for uh, the United States the because US. of our freaking regulation that stifles innovation. So hopefully with uh, SEC, if, if a Trump, if we got a Trump victory, I expect that to be available to us very soon. Um, but Same. regardless, as far as alternative options, you know, when you have Stripe doing things like this, I mean, me and you both run uh, businesses with like recurring revenue and stuff like that, right? So people are usually using some sort of checkout link. And I don't know what processor you use, but uh, Stripe. we actually do use Stripe. Yeah, so Same. exactly. So imagine like for, someone wants to join 4DU and instead of uh, having to, and this happens to us, I don't know if you ever have this happen, but sometimes people... Um, have to actually schedule follow-up calls um, uh, with my team before joining um, because they have to go sell Bitcoin or something to then use it to join the community. And uh, it's like, that's an unnecessary extra step. They should yeah, just be yeah. able to use the crypto of their choice to mm -hmm. complete the checkout. And then Stripe handles that for me and totally. converts it into what we desire. Like, because sometimes people are like, will you accept this? Will you accept this? And it's like, I've never even heard of this coin. I don't want <laughs> I'm gonna accept this random coin. Will you accept poop coin? Yeah, exactly. For see? <laughs> so like this will, and we talked about that before, like that's kind of what Stripe's going to be doing. They'll, they'll be the middleman in between and it will yeah. automatically convert to USD and they won't have to have that extra step. So it's just going to be that next level of convenience, that next, that next, um, reason to not need to off ramp and like just an all around paradigm shift for people to realize like, Oh, this isn't just like something you can like buy and flip for like profit. This is like yeah. actually a currency. And up until yeah. now, I don't think people actually view it that way. Even people that say they're like all about it, they're really just here for, a, you know, to flip, <laughs> yeah. meaning buy at 10, sell at 20. Like that's what most people are doing in crypto. But in reality, like what happens when we quickly enter a world where the costs of cashing out are greater than the costs of not. And I think, yeah. you know, that's where we're quickly headed. So exciting mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. And then you can just use your Bitcoin or whatever to just buy something directly as an exchange yeah. of value rather than going through all the middlemen. Yep. Um, it's huge, dude. It's, I guess what I'm thinking right now is there's probably a lot of people watching who may, maybe they don't fully grasp the implications of cryptocurrency on the great awakening of our planet and all of you know how that correlates. So in a few words, like how would you explain to somebody who maybe doesn't understand the big picture yet of why is this a really good thing for the great awakening? You know, The top two uh, value propositions is decentralization and a hedge against tyranny. So I'll quickly go into those two. So with our current model of uh, currency, we have a centralized model. So the Federal Reserve has far too much power. And if you study humans or history or really any of these types of realms, you will quickly see that when humans have too much power, they abuse it. And so Facts. instead of blaming the human or you know the family or the company, it's just human nature. So instead, we need to build a system that doesn't even put us in that position in the first place. And so that's the decentralization aspect of cryptocurrency. No one owns it. It's not a publicly traded company. It doesn't have a CEO. There, so there's not what you call counterparty risk. And um, that's a really big deal because even like stocks in the yes. stock market, like ultimately you're 
a lot of what you're betting on is the jockey, right? So like you're betting on that CEO and, and that CEO can 10 X the company or drive it into the ground. And, um, there's just a lot of human risk. Whereas with cryptocurrency, you're not dealing with human risk. This is code and it can't be altered. Yeah. So uh, at least a good cryptocurrencies code can't be altered. Some I'm sure uh, a lot of coins that try to act like <clears throat> the legit coins, um, I believe can be altered, but I digress. And then uh, the other piece a hedge against tyranny is really important as well, because as I'm sure most of our viewers have noticed, your buying power is getting sucked, <laughs> sucked out of your pockets very quickly. Sucked into the void. Yeah, it's just getting siphoned year over year. And so, and then we also have the, a lot of political issues where like a lot of people feel reliant on being somewhat involved in the political system, even though maybe they don't like it because they feel like, well, if this person doesn't get into office, that's my only hope, right? Well, a complete alternative to that is like not putting ourselves in that position in the first place. Exactly. And so um, thing, technologies like Bitcoin and actually like decentralized cryptocurrencies, they allow you to store your wealth and um, use and participate in a new form of money that whether there's a Republican or a Democrat, whether they print the dollar to the ground or not, you're not only going to be able to maintain your wealth, but it will actually skyrocket the more that they print versus mm -hmm. the way that things have been thus far. The yeah. way that most people earn a living is through a job. And the more that they print, the less that that earned income actually helps them. And everything else gets more expensive. And the dollars that are sitting in their bank account don't go as far. It's not like mm -hmm. they take dollars out of your bank account. You still have $10,000 if you had $10,000 before. It's yeah. just that when you go to buy a car, it's not $30,000 anymore. It's sixty five. And your yeah. financing rate isn't 4.5% anymore. It's nine. And so it's just a sleight of hand. Uh, whereas if you had $10,000 in Bitcoin before, and then you look at $10,000 in Bitcoin now, um, the amount of Bitcoin, right? Let's say you had like 0.2 Bitcoin or whatever. That amount didn't change. But whereas mm -hmm. it may have been worth $10,000 before, it might be worth $30,000 before. So you have the opposite effect of inflation. And so I would just refer to it as a hedge against tyranny because in a lot of people have come to accept inflation in our capitalistic system, but it's actually just a byproduct largely of government spending. We've been conned that it's like a, a side effect of capitalism, but it's really mm -hmm. not. If we didn't have the Federal Reserve and we didn't have the uh, governmental spending model that we have where they just blow cash and largely not even on our nation, um, yeah, that's the majority of our inflation. Just FYI, like it doesn't have to exist. A lot of other uh, nations, they actually have deflation issues. I've talked about that before, like Japan, China, other nations. They actually have issues. They have to try to inflate their currency because it struggles so bad. It deflates. Um, so ours is quite the opposite. Um, but I do believe that's because we're the we're world's reserve currency and have kind of abused that for a bit too long. <laughs> yeah, to put it mildly. Yeah, you know, the way I see it is I love your example of we can't expect humans to overcome their egoic nature right now where we are collectively. If you give like 95 or more percent of people like a lot of power, they're going to abuse it. It's just the ego's nature. So we can't expect the planet to heal and awaken by just becoming collectively morally virtuous all at once. It's probably not going to happen, right? At least not for a long time. So a better way to go about helping spur the awakening along is get rid of the ability to have corruption so that we actually have to operate in a fair society. That's a really good analogy from like a spiritual perspective of if you're a food addict or a drug addict or whatever, it's not the right approach to say, let me keep all these drugs in my house. Let me keep all this junk food in my house. And I'm just going to try to willpower myself not to eat it or take the drugs. It's like, you're going to fail over and over again. That's not <laughs> the right strategy. Get those things out of your house. 
And that's what we need to do as a country, right? Is like get all this corruption out of our house because if we don't, it's just gonna keep perpetuating itself. There will always be greedy, power-hungry people who have no problem harming others to gain power for themselves. We can't expect those types of people to stop appearing on our planet because we've got a ways to go before that's our reality. So let's de-incentivize corruption as much as we possibly can. And when I look at our, our country here in America, and if I had to point my finger at like, what's the most obvious forward-facing corruption? If you could pick only one issue, what is it? Personally, I would probably choose the money and politics issue. Because to me, there's nothing more egregiously, you know, morally wrong about allowing politicians to be bought and paid for by big mega corporations. What could be a greater violation of our rights as Americans that we elect these, you know, we vote for senators, congressmen, presidents, whoever, governors, and we're voting for them because we're like, hey, I believe you're going to represent me the best. And so I vote for you. And then as soon as you get in office, you get paid millions of dollars by mega pharmacy companies and stuff. And you're just like, all right, pharmacy companies, what do you want me to do? What policies do you want? You guys paid me 10 mil, whatever you want, I'll do it. And we're all like, but but I voted for you for me. I'm like, well, but you didn't give me $10 million. You know, it's like, this isn't how the system was supposed to work the way our founding fathers, you know, created it. So if we, if we did anything to help clear up corruption in our country the fastest, the first move I would make is let's make it illegal for anyone holding public office to take any money from any corporations or institutions because it's bribery, right? That's on its face. That's exactly what it is. Corporations bribe politicians to insert the policies they want. And so, of course, we have a runaway capitalist society because it doesn't mean capitalism isn't inherently a bad model or something. I think it's the best, probably the best model we have available because it imitates natural law, right? You look at the, the uh, nature or the animal kingdom and it's, it's capitalism, right? It's the strongest survive, the strongest rise to the top. But everybody finds their place in the natural world when it's that competition model. So if we want to mimic natural law, capitalism is probably the best way to go. But we can't have a capitalist society where there's all of these loopholes for corruption and essentially communism to sneak its way in through money laundering and bribing. So it's like money is really the source of all corruption in this country and really around the world. So if you can stop the flow of money going to corrupt means or from corrupt sources, you can clear up a lot of the problems, right? And the big problem is, if you guys don't know this, that you're listening, um, here's some breaking news for you. Our currency is fake. We don't really have money. We're, <laughs> our, our currency isn't backed by anything. You know, it's like monopoly money that the Fed prints and says, we say it has value. You get no say in it. Use our monopoly money. And so as Jeremy was saying, inflation just increases every year and our buying power goes down. So how does humanity get out of this trap of uh, the weaponization of money or fake money against us? Well, something like cryptocurrency is a incredibly powerful solution to that because of all the reasons Jeremy just gave. It's decentralized. It can't be printed and inflated. It, you really can't use it in the same ways for collusion like you can with our fiat currency. So yeah, anytime I see a cryptocurrency uh, breaking news like this kind of adoption from Stripe, I get really excited because it's. I know it's a very good thing that cryptocurrency is getting adopted because it gives us more power, the people more power, uh, to use our money the way we want to. But uh, with all of the backgrounds and the way it works with the economy and the different currencies, like I'll read an article and be like, I know this is good news, but I don't really understand what this article is really saying. So let me send this to Jeremy and see what he has to say. And then you'll usually explain like the full implications of it. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. So, um, you know, thank you for breaking that down. But to, to the viewers of, of this show right now, Jeremy has not been shy about uh, encouraging you to get involved in cryptocurrency because this really is a once in a lifetime opportunity for wealth generation. And you don't even have to have tons and tons of money to make a great profit from cryptocurrency and the way that these cycles every couple of years run it's like just invest whatever you can invest now and you know you can really make a good return on that and then the next cycle you can do it again and you can sort of build like that if you're um if you're not working with a lot of liquid capital but yeah just for the sake of us all becoming financially independent 
not outsourcing our, our power anymore to institutions. We have to be financially independent. And uh, they've rigged the game, like you said, with their game theory that they control the fiat, the fake money printing, and they want us to use that fake money so they can control it. And so we're going to start using cryptocurrency more and more as uh, time goes by. And it's going to be interesting to see how the negative polarity pivots, you know, according to that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're definitely racing to cement themselves in in whatever ways they can to control this new wave because they weren't expecting it to get this big and reach terminal velocity. And so yeah. to me, that's what the ETFs are and a lot of these things, right? So just if they can convince as many, you know, there's 300-ish million Americans, if they can convince, you know, two-thirds or more, um, which I think is very conservative because the amount of people that invest into 401ks or IRAs is almost <laughs> everyone who works a job. Yeah. So that's the model. And so if they can convince them to buy the, the fake Bitcoin, right, just buy the ETFs, um, yeah. then that's the booby trap with the new system Yeah, is right. So maybe that's, a little confusing because our audience might be like, but Jeremy, you're saying how bullish this was. You're always excited about ETF news. Yeah. That's because ETF equals price go up. <laughs> right. I wouldn't want to be invested in the ETF. Yes. But right. it helps what I'm invested in. Right. Yeah. And you know, maybe if it's a quick flip, whatever, like I'm not saying it's the, the worst thing ever to ever right. buy it, but the, the typical model of work a job, invest monthly in your 401k and now you have the option to invest in bitcoin i mean i think that's great for people that you know that's where they're at but um if you're willing to actually do your due diligence and stuff like that you you would want to figure out the difference between actually owning your coins and storing them off any sort of um brokerage and fully cold storage what we would call it yeah and you know having this thing showing up in your brokerage that mimics the price of bitcoin but is actually far from true cryptocurrency ownership those are different things mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah that's to me that's their main uh that's their main approach right now but like regardless i think they acknowledge and are very well aware, especially the, the government and the politicians that like, they don't fully know what to do with this right now. They don't know what to do with it yet. And, um, I saw an interesting little, uh, clip the other day from, uh, Obama, which I'm, I'm not going to play or anything like that. It was just a one liner, but he was basically saying, um, now that Bitcoin is popular, people basically have a Swiss bank account in their pocket. And I thought that that was a, a very good Whoa. way to explain that. And if that's he said the him, quiet part out loud, bro. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so like before jurisdiction used to be like a physical thing, right? Like it used to be yeah. longitudinal and latitudinal and you had to go uh, overseas to essentially shelter money. And, and with this, what you guys need to understand at a simple level is just that, uh, jurisdiction is now, uh, what we would call there's now a gray area. You don't have to go anywhere. You can just go into the cyber, the cyber world and uh, the blockchain. And there are essentially that's massively threatening to them because yeah. you have a Swiss bank account in your pocket. They can't <laughs> and they're control your money on, anymore. They're relying on you to um, report that and to play by their rules, but mm -hmm. they don't own the thing. Think about that. They they yeah. own our currency. So yeah, they make the rules. They don't own this thing. Now, I know there's going to be the re reply guys in the comments that the CIA, CIA bro. <laughs> CIA, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, um, I'm curious before we move on, what is your preferred cold storage method or product? Yeah, we had a question about that. Um, so... 
We like to, so like just base for pretty much everyone listening would be just the Ledger Nano. There's the X and the S, whatever you like. <sighs> Bro. What? I've had the biggest problems with, with Ledger. With oh, the really? Nano X. Yeah, I've had, I've bought three of them. I have them all right here actually, <laughs> because I'll buy, I'll buy a new one. Why? What There's happens? Two, two of them. I'll buy one. I put all my coins on it. And then uh -huh. it, when I load it onto my computer, it says like error broken or whatever. Wait, and I really? I get it to fix. So I call Ledger. I'm like, hey, and they're like, we'll send you a new one. They send me a new one. I plug it in. Within two minutes, it goes error broken, not, <laughs> uh, not working. I'm like, oh. so I buy a third one. So I've bought three of these things now. No so way. Still, I got to buy a fourth one because all three I've gotten have broken. Um, but maybe wow. you've had better luck than I have with with Ledger. Well, not only that, I mean, we, we've we had uh, a few hundred students on ramp and I, not one has ever shared that that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> I just have weird, weird karma with technology, bro. It could really be your do. computer. Like I've tried it on my MacBook and iMac. Wow. Interesting. I just have some bad karma from a past life, bro. <laughs> I'm here to heal it. It's why I incarnated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but there's other options. There's uh Trezor. I use T -R -E Trezor like Um I've never used that one, but it seems to be widely accepted. Yeah. And then if you're looking for like a uh, higher security, higher just like a little bit of a, a bougier, bougier one um, that that we recommend to our students in our community. At least like if you're just starting out, unnecessary. But um, if you're a multiple six figures and above, usually it makes sense to start to invest more into um, privacy and security mm -hmm. in terms of your wallet choices and stuff. And there's been one or two things over the years that Ledger has done that are, I wouldn't say. Um, horrible but um just a little bit questionable yeah where it's like would i want to have millions on there i don't know so um it's called the grid lattice plus and that's what we have kind of our higher net worth students use and, and that's, nice. what, that's what i use as well but i do use ledgers i have different different ones but Maybe yeah you all have just, better karma I, with the grid i'm glad you asked that because um yeah, once again, like if you're new to this stuff, just want to highlight that like if you look up Bitcoin on Robinhood or any sort of Coinbase. brokerage and you buy some, you don't own Bitcoin. I'm just letting you know. You own yeah. a derivative that tracks Bitcoin. And here's the difference. If Robinhood goes under or if your shit gets seized and you're like a fugitive or something, right? Then that's theirs. It's gone. Mm -hmm. If you actually own Bitcoin, can you hold up your ledger again, Aaron? Yeah. Then you have it in your pocket. You can shove it up your ass. You can swallow it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going it through airport security, that's the best way. It can be a suppository. <laughs> like, bro, no one cares if you have a cold. You don't need to put it up your ass, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So my just point in case, is like just in that, case. that thing is with you. So let's say that right now Aaron's like, I'm going to Africa and he has $10 million on that ledger. Well, if you have $10 million in what says it's Bitcoin on like Robinhood or on one of these brokerages or even on Coinbase or any of these ones on Coinbase, that is real Bitcoin, right? On Robinhood, not on Coinbase. Yes. But if it sits on Coinbase, that's mm -hmm. not yours. You have yeah, to take it off. And that's the big difference between like stocks, these other instruments that we're used to, and yeah. then this new instrument. It's like, that's why the, the government is terrified of it and they don't know what to do with it because it's literally digital gold. Like the yeah. same way that you have precious metals and you store them in a vault, you don't, pretty much anyone who's into metals knows if you buy this thing on the screen that represents the metal, you don't actually own metals. You own a derivative that's, hopefully tracking metals but you don't own metals unless they're in your hand and in your vault yeah well crypto is the same way it's just a digital version of that so um, hopefully that you know pieces some things together for people nice yeah thanks for that breakdown dude hey if you enjoyed this short video clip and you want to watch the full podcast episode you can click right here and if you want to watch another short clip we think you might also like you can click right here